Do you think that there's a way in which, in a way you can ex exploit what's happened to change policy and actually funnel more money towards the unequal parts of society? Well, absolutely. And, you know, to be fair to the government, they are already taking unprecedented actions to try mm. to protect uh, people, to try to protect people's jobs and incomes. But the big gap, I think, are some that are most vulnerable. So if you think about the government's job retention scheme, which is an unprecedented intervention, it supports the self-employed people, are really needed measures given some of the underlying inequality in the country. But, you know, the analysis that we've done at the New Economics Foundation suggests about 5.6 million people that aren't captured in either of those schemes and are at real risk of hardship because at the moment they fall through the cracks and they have to rely on universal credit and rely on living on 90-odd quid a week, which is just absolutely inadequate. So knowing the vulnerabilities, knowing that there are going to be many families that are going to face real hardship, this has to be an area where the government moves and tries to move in order to prop up and bolster the social security system. And we think should be trying to put, it, put forward a minimum income guarantee. That's something it can do now. And then moving forward, it has to think about how we recover from this when we start to recover in a way that is better and reconfigures the way the economy works in order to address these fundamental structural inequalities. To, to be blunt, it is easy to clap for the NHS. It's much more difficult to make people, people pay for it. It is, but I think it's moments like this, moments of emergency crisis that reminds us why we have a national health service free at the point of use. Um, and, you know, one of the sort of tragedies of this is that we have underinvested in our health service and social care uh, for well over a decade. Um, and it's made us more vulnerable as a society. So the reason we club together in order to fund these collective public services is that it makes us all more resilient. And it's at times that are hard that you remember that. So I hope one of the things that does come out of this is a sense that actually we do need these critical foundational services and we've got to be willing so, to invest in them so that they're there to protect us, they're there to take care so of us.